In this video, I cover my spotted bay bass setups. That's coming up right now, so stay tuned. Hey, it's Roman Castro. Welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you here. If it's your first time here and you're in the process of learning how to catch spotted bay bass, you're in the right place. Consider subscribing and click that bell notification so you don't miss anything. We're gonna cover the four rod and reel setups I used to throw the baits we covered in the last video. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put, a, I'll put a little pop down card up here. Okay, so the first setup is what I call my super heavy duty setup or my exotic baits setup. This is a Revo Toro S60 and it's running 65 pound braid on there, okay? And I have it paired up with this heavy duty rod. It's actually a East Kind of Bait and Tackle uh, and Phoenix Rods um, custom build. So let me tell you the specs on this rod. This rod is a, it's seven feet, nine inches long. And it's, it's, it's a heavy rod with a fast action tip. And it's rated for lures between two and eight ounces. Uh, and it's rated also for a line weight of 12 to 35 pounds. So yeah, I'm way overdoing it on the, <laughs> on the line rating. Uh, but it's okay. I'm, if if anything breaks, if the rod breaks, I, I'm I'm kind of okay with that. I just I just want to fish 65 pound braid, and the reason that I want to fish 65 pound, 65 pound braid is because I'm actually towing a camera, right? So I want to make sure that I get my camera back, and uh, I'm okay with breaking a rod, just not losing the camera. Okay, so that is my first setup. That's the one I use to throw my A rig on. Okay, so the A rig combined with the camera ends up weighing about seven ounces and that's like the perfect setup to tow that through the water. So you kind of need that low speed reel, which is a 5.3 to one ratio reel. That tells me that it gives it a lot of, it, it uses the force of your turn and gives it a lot of torque because it's not, because of the spool that's not spinning as fast as a, as a normal like reel. This is like a pretty, a slow, I guess it would be considered a slow reel. But in that slowness you gain torque because one of your, one of your complete circles here ends up equaling uh, less turns than normal, but it gives you more power per turn, okay? So you, that's kind of what you need to kind of pull up the line that's got so much weight on it, especially with a the, with the lure like this, with this shape. There's also a lot of drag in the water, okay? This A-Rig by itself, it weighs a little under two ounces. So if I want to tow anything else and get it on film, this is, this is, this is kind of what I need, right? When I run out of battery on this setup, I'll usually go back and cut the camera out and tie the A-Rig back onto that setup and that's kind of where it lives. That's uh, my permanent A-Rig rod and reel. Uh, I only use it for that or for filming specific things with the, with the, with the Go Fish Cam. And so that kind of uh, lives on my kayak that way and whenever I feel like I need to throw it and check something else, if I want to troll somewhere, I'll have it ready to go. I just unclip it and, and send it out and see if I can catch any fish with it, okay? So you do lose a little bit of speed with this kind of reel, with the, with the lower gear ratio, but you do gain power, okay, torque. If you wanna see the unboxing and how I set up this reel, check out the video up here. And let's move on to the second setup. Okay, so my second setup is my crankbait setup. I use it for crankbaits, of course, like I mentioned earlier, and for other hard baits like this, jerkbait. So anything pretty much with treble hooks, that's that's a, that's a hard bait, okay? Uh, for the reel, I'm using a 13 Fishing Concept TX uh, reel. It's a 6.621 gear ratio, and that's a good, uh, and that's a good speed for crankbaits actually, like at a, at a, you don't have to spin too fast or too hard, and you'll get the bait swimming at the right speed. Uh, and it gives you a little bit of power too because it's because uh, you're pulling basically the bait to the water, you don't get too tired. So a 6.6 to 1 reel is a good gear ratio for this kind of crank bait fishing thing. You could use this reel for not just, there's, there's, not, it, there's no specific crank bait reels. It just really what matters is the gear ratio and like the, the power you kind of, the power you want per crank or the, the, how fast you want it to be. Like you want to have a super slow reel that has more power, but then the kind of, you, you, you're winding faster to get the bait to move at the same speed or do you want one that's like super fast and you could just have to you could just wind it super slow and the and the bait will come pretty fast but then when you hook into a fish you don't have as much power to kind of muscle it in right so I think 6.6 to 1 is a good gear ratio for this kind of situation and now let's go kind of over the rod the rod is a 
So the, the rod I'm using for my crankbaits is a custom rod. It is uh, built on a Phoenix X15 blank. And it's kind of like made out of a glass composite. So this rod is seven feet, nine inches long. It's, it's rated for lures between three quarters and four ounces. And for the line weight of 15 to 40 pound line. Um, the cool thing about this rod, it's got a parabolic, parabolic bend to it. So more of the rod flexes and the backbone of the actual rod is, is a little bit further back if, if any. So the backbone's like way back here, right? Where like it starts to like, where it won't let you bend it. But even then, even even back here next to the, where the reel sits, the reel sits right here, okay? And look, it's still even, it's still a little bit bendy even back here, right? So the whole rod loads up when you, when you, when you cast it, when you, when you catch a fish, look at this thing, right? It just, the whole, most of the, the majority of the rod bends or, or like flexes. And this is, this is a, got a moderate flex to it. And the speed for it is also, I think it's a moderate speed. It's not, it's definitely not fast. So the tip is a little bit loose and it lets you, it gives you, there's a lot of benefits to having a rod like this for crankbaits. And I'm, I'm going to explain, explain those to you in a second. But see, look at the rod tip. It's just like super bendy, right? And it doesn't take, see how it just kind of keeps going. It doesn't, it doesn't snap back into place like with the, like with the jig stick, right? Let me show you the the jig stick real quick so you can see how fast it kind of snaps back into place. Okay. So this is a this is the Phoenix M1. We're gonna cover this next, but let me just show you the difference. See, like if I do this, it kind of it comes back faster. You can hear a whip to the wind, right? And the crankbait rod doesn't come back as fast to center. Okay. And that's kind of what you want. You want it to kind of come back to center, but not too fast. Okay. okay, so here's four reasons why uh, having a, a dedicated crankbait rod is beneficial to you if you're going to fish crankbaits or kind of even jerkbaits or anything that has like treble hooks on it that's like hard like this, okay? One of the benefits of fishing this kind of a, a, a dedicated crankbait rod is that since it's, since it's so uh, bent, flexible, uh, when you're casting with it, m the majority of the rod bends so you can use that to kind of load up and slingshot the bait instead of just kind of like a more stiff rod kind of where it does that. Right, the majority of the rod will bend, and then you you can slingshot it. Right, so you kind of a little bit of little let a little bit of line out, so the bait is dangling like about two or three feet, and then you kind of whip it back, and then as you whip it, the whole the whole rod will kind of bend, and then when you get to the very top, it just kind of swing it out there and it kind of like slingshots it. Okay, so that's the that's one of the benefits of having a dedicated crankbait rod. You can actually cast a little bit further with them. Okay, uh, and then uh, second benefit is that the flexibility in the tip it it's the whole, pretty much the whole rod is like flexible and it kind of lets you feel uh the bait better because it's kind of letting it do its thing it's letting it swim down there and it's not kind of like snapping back to place where the it'll send the bait kind of knock around and bounce back and forth so uh it's hard to explain but it lets you feel the vibration of the bait in the water better and uh another benefit to that is because the rod tip is so willing to like bend and uh, not put so much force on the bait, it will actually let it swim better when it when it's hitting stuff. Like when it's hitting structure, uh, your bait's gonna hit it and it's gonna deflect, and then it's gonna come back to center, right? Well, if the rod tip action is too fast, uh, it, when it hits something and deflects, it's gonna jerk it right back into place, right back in line, and it doesn't look as natural as uh, as when it does as when it deflects kind of slower. Plus, if you're deflecting off of rocks and stuff. Um, and you're snapping back into place too soon, it'll end up getting more snags than if you had a crankbait rod that would let it kind of swim a little bit and come back to center, right? If you saw it underwater, it wouldn't be that easy to see the differences, but there is a difference. I'm definitely getting less snags on a crankbait rod than you would if I, if I fish the same bait uh, on, a, on a jig stick, like the, a fast action rod or an extra fast action rod, okay? So the, another benefit of, of that kind of the whole uh, flexibility of the rod that goes like parabolic throughout the whole rod is another benefit of having a crankbait rod is again it all has to do with that parabolic shape and the and the gradual loading up of the of the rod. Um, when a fish attacks your bait, this is a spotty, okay? And this is the, this is your bait. Swim to the water, and the spotty comes up and just hits it, and it's got it by the it's got it in its teeth, it's got it from the side and there's actually no hooks in the fish 
and you feel the bite and you set the hook, boom, you rip it out of there. And before the, the fish even has time to come cl close to the hooks, you've actually ripped the bait out of its mouth and you're not gonna catch that fish, okay? Uh, so that's what, that's what would happen if you fished it with a normal uh, rod, like a jig stick, right? So when you fish it with a the, with the, with the crankbait rod, then when you go to set your hook, the whole rod kind of like bends. So you, like a normal rod would be like, boom, you set the hook and it's like straight, right? And but with this with this crankbait rod, you set the hook and it kind of the hook the the rod, the rod just kind of bends out and it gives you a nice little arch. And then that action of the of the rod actually is taking up some of the power in your hook set. And so what's gonna happen is you're gonna be reeling it up, and the fish is gonna be trying to shake his head. We'll, we'll make this this way so you can see it. You're gonna reel it up, and the fish is gonna be trying to shake his head. And if you have too strong of a of a of a rod tip or like extra fast or fast, that's enough force for the fish to use against you to pull the hook out of its face, right? But if you have a, a crankbait rod with a moderate action, what's gonna happen is when the fish tugs at it, the whole rod's gonna give and it's gonna let the fish kind of shake around, but it's not gonna let it have enough power against the hook to pull it out, okay? So that's hard to explain, you kinda have to visualize it, but that's kind of another, that's another benefit, so that's, the, that's the major benefit of having that that parabolic bend to your rod that's gonna give that fish kind of room to move its head, but not you, not use it as a something to pull against to kind of rip the hook out of its own face. Now, that whole effect goes away if if you have the hooks into the fish and you're cranking as hard as you can and you're also pulling as hard as you can. Uh, you you kind of like you're you're negating the flexibleness of your crankbait rod. If you have it pinned at its max flexibility at that point, then it's just you pulling the fish and taking the hook out of its face by just yanking it basically, right? So you want to pull enough, you want to set the hook and leave enough pressure on it that your, that your rod is still parabolic and give it enough space for it to like deal with the head shakes, right? So as you're doing that, you're kind of reeling it up and you're giving it that pull so you have that, that nice arch to it, but you don't want to pull it too hard where, where, the, where the, the rod is already bent past its, past its uh, max and there's no room for it to like work the fish as it tries to shake his head and come off the bait. Okay, so <laughs> okay, I know that might be too much information, but that is the whole, that's the way I see it with the uh, with, uh, crankbait rods and why you wanna have a dedicated rod to fish crankbaits with, okay? So that's not saying you can't fish uh, these crankbaits or these uh, jerk baits or uh, any other hard bait with a normal jig stick, but, um, if you do that, you have to be more careful with how you you uh, set the hook. Maybe you don't set the hook so hard, or you, you don't set the hook, you just wind into it, right? But anyway, that's enough for crankbait talk. <laughs> Let's uh, move on to the next uh, setup. All right, setup number three. I call this my power fishing setup, and I, I'm using a Shimano Cronark 200E7 reel. This is a baitcaster, of course, and it. I think I have 30 pound braid on this guy. So 30 pound braid and this is a reel I use for what I call and what Coach Worf calls a junk setup, right? So it's it's everything, it's it's uh, all of the uh, lures that are, don't have a dedicated setup, like a crankbait or like a A-rig, I throw on my junk rod. This is my junk setup, okay? So my junk setup is again like the it's a it's a Shimano Cronark 207 200 E7, and I have it paired up with a Phoenix M1 rod. So it's extra fast action, and it's seven foot eight inches, and it's rated for lures between one quarter and two ounces, and line weight between ten and twenty five pounds. Okay, so this is an awesome rod. I know the, the rod is rated for 25 pounds max, but I fished 30 pound braid on it. It's done, it does great, it does great. This is a really nice rod, I love it. It's like super, it's like stiff, but like a little bit moderate right here, like in the middle. And it's just a good all around rod for fishing. Okay, so I use this combo to throw the, the underspins, uh, spinner baits, um, the Texas rig uh, fluke with the bullet in line. Um, what else, what else, what else? Uh, yeah, and I usually do it with a leader that's uh, between 15 and 20 pound fluorocarbon and I'll usually tie on about, I don't know, 
five feet of it and kind of just use it as I go and I end up when it when it gets like about two feet long two feet long I'll end up just cutting it and retying another I don't know five to six feet and kind of just use that uh, when, when I fish it when I have that set up that's when I when I fish uh, in the in the open so when I'm just fishing the bays and not on docks I will fish the again the underspins the Texas rig fluke with the inline uh, bullet weight I'll fish spinner baits I'll fish Pretty much anything I want to try, it's a new bait. I'll usually throw it on this setup. And uh, when I go fish this setup, when I'm gonna do when I'm gonna do a dock day, when I just when I'm just, when I'm just gonna fish the docks, and when I'm just gonna fish the docks, I'll take the same setup and I'll and I'll change it up. This is this is a setup I use to fish. Uh, so I'll take that same exact uh, Texas rig fluke that we talked about in the last video, and I'll set it up with a drop shot, right? Instead of being an inline uh, bullet weight. I'll set it up like a drop shot like this with a one ounce weight and I'll use that to kind of pitch on docks and let it go all the way to the bottom, jig it for a little bit, there's no no bites, bring it back up really fast. So that's another thing I didn't mention about this reel. This reel is a seven to one reel. So it's kind of fast and it's perfect for when I fish docks because uh, what I like to do is I start going parallel to the docks in my kayak and I will click the reel, get it into free spool I'll, I'll thumb the reel with my I, and I'll thumb the reel then I'll use a, the rod to kind of cast the drop shot or uh, I also fish the Tokyo rig on this setup cast it into the dock let it sink and then once it's and then as soon as it hits the bottom I kind of like stop it and bring it back up and the one ounce weight plus the seven to one gear ratio lets me fish it pretty fast uh, fast enough that I can pitch it into the, the one side of the piling uh, without stopping my kayak and then reel it back up and then pitch it on the other side of the piling let it go to the bottom and then bring it back up and then as I'm bringing it up the trick to go fast is uh, when you bring it up you let you leave about a rod's length of line in the water when you stop reeling and then you kind of just tilt the rod up that'll bring the weight up and it'll swing towards you and as it swings towards you you kind of just redirect it so it swings back into the next cast which would be like the other side of the piling or like the next piling. And then that technique makes you super fast to where, the, to where you don't even have to stop your kayak's motion unless you get a bite. So that's the way I like to fish docks. It's actually pretty fast uh, doing it this way. And if you get good at that, where you pull it out of the water and just use that swing into the next one, you can, you can cover docks pretty quickly. So that's kind of fun and uh, beneficial if you're doing like tournaments, especially if you're gonna fish docks for tournaments. So. I've done well with that technique. It's fun to see how fast you can get there and because of the one ounce weight, you get down pretty fast and then with the fast reel, you can pull it up pretty fast too. So it's a super efficient setup for that kind of fishing. Okay, so this fourth setup is a, what I call the my finesse fishing setup and this is a 2500 series Shimano Solstice. It's a FI model. They don't make these anymore but if you get them used, or if you get them probably, you still probably get them on eBay new in the package for like 30 bucks, 40 bucks. It's a, it's kind of a cheap reel, but it's lasted me a really long time. Uh, and uh, this is a rod it pairs with. It's actually a two-piece rod. So it's nice to have this. You could make it, put it in the car, and go fishing on your way to work or, or before work, after work. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice little setup. It's light. It's got a, I have it set up on a, let's see, it's a two-piece rod. It's a Shimano, uh, it's a six, Convergence, I think it's called? Yes, yeah, Shimano Convergence rod. It's six and a, it's six and a half feet long. It's rated for a line weight of between, of eight to 15. And a lure weight of three sixteenths to three quarters, okay? So that's a good, that's a good range. It's a good all around rod. The action on it is fast and the power on it is medium heavy. Okay. You could probably get away with the medium rod. Uh, would be a good one too. A medium rod and with like a fast action. Uh, but yeah, this is a good little rod setup. I fish the Ned rig on this one all the time. It's like my go-to Ned rig setup. And the line I have on this thing is 10 pound braid going to 10 pound fluorocarbon. Sometimes I'll, I'll put eight pound fluorocarbon, depends on how finicky the fish are. Uh, if I think they don't want to bite that because they're seeing the line, okay? But for the most part, 
10 pound braid to 10 pound fluorocarbon works great as long as you're not fishing docks. If you're fishing docks, you're gonna get tore off so fast, it's not even funny. Uh, <laughs> at, at, if you're fishing docks, you probably just put it like heavier line, maybe like 15 pound uh, liter, or use uh, the heavier setup on the junk rod to fish the docks, okay? But yeah, this is a good setup. It's it's what I did the 100 fish with. This is the rod. And again, this this probably this whole combo, at the time brand new was like, I don't know, maybe like $150 setup or like $100 setup. 100 setup. Uh, I remember when I got this, I wasn't, even into, I wasn't even into fishing, but my dad was gonna come over to visit for a couple of months and I thought it would be cool to do something with him on the water and I took him fishing. I know he, I remember, I, I vaguely remember fishing with him as a kid. So he, I knew he enjoyed fishing. So I kind of took him out to the bay and we learned to catch spotties together. That was a fun, fun, fun time. But now I have two of those combos and I have them on my kayak at all times and usually rigged with a, like a Ned rig with a TRD and a Ned rig with a hula stick. And usually what happens is if I, if I, if I miss a fish, uh, I'll, I'll switch rods and I'll throw the, the opposite thing. So like if I, if I missed on the TRD, I'll throw the hula stick or vice versa, just to, as like a follow up bait, right? Just, uh, or if, for example, if something broke me off, the next one's ready to go. And I just kind of like pitch it back in there and hopefully I can catch whatever broke me off. Okay. So that's the finesse setup. That's pretty much the, the setups I use. Uh, you could also throw other little small baits on this, on this, uh, finesse setup. Uh, so I know it's a lot of setups to kind of think about and it could get a little bit overwhelming but if you're new the only setup you should worry about for now once you get the hang of this is a finesse setup so something like this so you want to look for something that's that's uh and don't worry about the brands just go up, go by your price range whatever you can afford uh that meets the following specs okay so it's got to be a, a reel between I, I would recommend a spinning reel so this is a this is a spinning reel it's easier to cast, it's easier to maintain, and uh, it'll kind of get you bit. Uh, and then once you get more experience, you could figure out if you want to use a bait caster or not, right? But for just for starting out, you go, you can go buy this and without too much training, you'll figure out how to fish it, okay? So basically when you want to cast it, you uh, leave a little bit of line at the front of the rod. So I like to leave about a foot to two feet from the lure to the tip of the rod. And then you take your index finger, you hold the line, you open the bail, you swing back, you cast, and when you cast at the top of your swing, you let go of your finger and the, the bait will just fly, okay? There's hardly any resistance on the, on the line going out with the spinning rod like this, as long as the bail's open, okay? Once your once your bait goes out there and, and it hits the water, and it hits the water, then you close the bail, and you're ready to start fishing it. Don't start cranking on it right away. Let it sink to the bottom, and then kind of start working it back. Okay. Whatever you want to do. Okay. If you don't have any clue on how to work the baits or or cast and all that kind of stuff, uh, check out the 25 fishing tips PDF that I have available for anybody that joins my email list. Uh, I'll put a link for that down here if you want to check it out. It's uh, romancaster.com forward slash 25 tips. Uh, and okay, so that's uh, that's kind of like the 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 reel you want as a beginner. Uh, just and and then you want a rod that pairs with that reel. So anything uh, that can handle. Uh, sorry, sorry. Let's go back to the, let's go back a little bit more. Talk, let's talk a little bit more about the reel. You want your reel to handle uh, line weight of 10, 10 pounds. Okay, this one goes. This reel can handle six pound, eight pound, or ten pound, and that's fine. That doesn't mean you have to. It means that you can use any one of those line weights on there. So find a reel that's around this size, twenty five hundred, or or like actually it'll go fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred. Any size reel that can handle ten pound line, and uh, put a, and then you're gonna spool it up with ten pound monofilament. Okay, don't try to get. Uh, braid yet unless you've fished before mono is easier to learn with it's it's uh, it's cheaper and uh that's all you really need to get started to see if you even like the sport before you start spending too much money on it okay so recap 2500 size spinning reel spooled up with 10 pound monofilament and to a rod that's rated for uh 10 pound line 
or that the rating includes 10 pound lines. This rod is rated for, like I said, eight to 15 pound lines. So it's, it's right, right there, right in the money spot, right in the mid range of this rod. And then uh, you should be good to go to fish those, uh, those uh, one fifth of an ounce Ned rigs. Those Ned rigs is what I want you to start fishing on if you're new, okay? Um, there's a lot of baits out there. There's a ton of baits that you can choose from, but I know that these little Ned rigs get bit just from personal experience. The easiest catch has been with these for me. The second easiest has been uh, drop shotting with uh, a bait like this, right? A little fluke on a worm hook. Uh, so if you're new to this and you're just getting starting out, you, you just went and bought a rod and reel that meets those specifications. Um, I don't care what brand it is, as long as it works and it meets those specifications, and then set it up with a little Ned rig. And if if you don't have luck with that, it's probably because you're doing something wrong. This, these these things work so well. Uh, you can also try a drop shot with a little fluke like this. Okay, uh, you're gonna get your little bait and you're gonna tie a little San Diego jam knot on here, and you're gonna be good to go to catch some fish. If you don't know how to tie a San Diego jam knot, uh, I'm gonna put a video up here for you to check it out. I walk you step by step on how to tie a San Diego jam knot. So that's the only knot you're gonna need for this situation. And then if you wanna do the drop shot setup with the Texas rig fluke and a one ounce uh, weight, then also check out this other video. It's called uh, uh, Palomar knot. Cause the Palomar knot is what you wanna do when you do kind of a drop shot, okay? Okay, so use a San Diego jam knot to tie this Ned rig onto your 10 pound monofilament line of your uh, setup, or use the Palomar knot to tie this uh, Texas rig fluke and drop shot onto your 10 pound monofilament, and then go out there and catch some spotties. If you found this video useful, help me make more content like this by supporting me on Patreon. Click on the Patreon icon right here to check out the different support levels and the perks associated with them. All right, so watch this video right here to see how to handle a spotted bay bass once you have one on the line. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you on the water. Woo!